Hey guys, and welcome back to EQ Planes, and today we'll be flying on Air Canada 737 MAX 8. Now, I've really been looking forward to flying Air Canada 737 MAX, as I want to see how their brand new domestic product stacks up to the older domestic products on the A320s, which I'm quite fond of. Although first, let's talk about the experience on the ground. Air Canada's check-in process was quick and easy. After going through a relatively quick security line, we arrived in the domestic terminal where our flight was originally going to depart out of. Now, I'm a huge fan of Calgary's domestic terminal, as it's got plenty of places to eat and most importantly, great windows for plane spotting. However, as of late, Calgary Airport has been using their newer international terminal for domestic flights. Now, the terminal itself is fine. There are plenty of places to eat in there and it does feel new and clean. However, there's one key issue with this terminal that will frustrate most empty. The fact that in the majority of locations, the terminal does have double layered glass, making it hard to see the aircraft. However, with some searching, I did find some okay views of our aircraft. Now our aircraft for today is an almost four year old Air Canada 737 MAX 8 registered Charlie Foxtrot Sierra Lima uniform. I must say that the new livery looks absolutely awesome on the 737 MAX 8. It's definitely grown on me over time. Now after walking all the way back to the domestic terminal to grab some pictures of the TCA Retrojet and having a bite to eat in this interestingly themed place in the terminal, we went back to start boarding. Now Air Canada 737 MAX 8s have a 2x2 two two configuration in premium at the front of the aircraft with the rest of the aircraft being economy in a 3x3 three three configuration. Now the aircraft does have a healthy amount of preferred seats which are just regular economy seats that have a bit of extra leg room. Now, my first impressions of the cabin are really nice. It's very sleek and modern, especially with the Boeing Sky interior. I'm seated in 23A, which has a pretty good window view. You also get your normal air vent and light. Now, so far, compared to the older A320s, this interior is quite impressive, but we'll have to see how the seats hold up which we'll get to after this beautiful taxi and moonlit takeoff from Calgary. After that takeoff, let's take a closer look at Air Canada's new IFE on the 737 Maxes. Now this IFE slightly differs from the ones on the A220. This moving map is pretty nice, especially compared to their uh, classic moving maps, and I really like it. And in terms of entertainment and movies, there's plenty to watch. And there's also a bar at the bottom, which shows you when different services are coming during the flight, which I like. The seats also have universal power connectors, along with USB-C jacks, which I always find a big plus. Air Canada started by handing out a slimmed down version of their clean care kit from 2020. Now, after the sun rose, Air Canada decided they would hand out their first drink service where I got an orange juice. Now, let's take a look at the seat and see how it stacks up to the older products on the A320. First, let's look in the seat back pocket though, where you have the Air Canada 737 MAX safety card. Notice how it avoids the word 737 MAX. And two air sickness bags. The seat padding is nothing to write home about. At least it's better than the Air Canada Dreamliner, but I've sat in better seats with airlines like Flair. The other thing is that the tray table is pretty small. 
it'd be quite hard to do work and put a drink on there all at the same time. The seats did feature an adjustable headrest, but to be honest, that isn't a feature I care all that much about. Now, when it comes to legroom, it was also pretty tight. I'm 6'1", and my knees were near the end, but for some shorter people, it may be fine. However, if you're anything over 6 feet, it might not be your best seat, and I'd spring for the preferred options. Now, between this and the A320 seats, I would take the A320 seats any day. I think padding's the most important part of an aircraft seat, and that's the only place where this besides legroom, is really lacking. I must say, the aircraft lavatory was kind of a letdown. It was pretty tall, but quite tight. There's a partition that can move if you need it, but that's not something you're gonna use every day. Air Canada's buy on board menu is back. I must admit, it's nice to have service back on the plane as well. However, we never did receive our second drink, service. Now, enjoy this relatively scenic landing into Toronto Pearson Airport. Stick around for my final thoughts. thoughts on the Air Canada 737 MAX 8 pretty much sum up too. It's an okay plane, but not as good as their A320s. The aircraft does have its perks. It has a very nice interior, along with an IFE leaps and bounds ahead of what you get on the A320. However, when it comes to things like the tray table, lavatory, and seat padding, it really lacks compared to the A320. Air Canada certainly did a better job than what they did on their 787 Dreamliners, but that's not a very high bar. This aircraft, in my opinion, could have been much better had they just put some more work into the padding on the seats. That alone could have made it a much better aircraft. So, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think about the Air Canada 737 MAX's economy seats in the comments below. Anyways, thank you guys for watching again, and hope to see you guys back next time.